So what up guys? I got a comment right here. So for those of you who are only listening to this audio, I'm going to read this comment to you. It's from the Beezer, posted this morning. Something is moving too fast. You're given a sign to slow it down. Something is telling you to focus on the most important things. You are strong. So the Spirit has sent you this message in a way that you cannot ignore. Because you are beloved, you are being taught. This is good. Although initially, it is confusing and fearsome. I think that you are being given a message to slow things down. I don't know in what way, but I think it's being communicated to you. Something is helping you by knocking you over. As weird as that sounds, I'm a random moron, but I like your soul, and that's my random perception. Either way, I hope you feel better. I can see you. You're a good-hearted warrior. Whatever this message is, it will make sense to you. You have been contacted, capital C, contacted. Great comment, Beezer. I wanted to say thank you for having the bravery to just throw it out there like that. And uh, I'm using it. The ironic thing about his comment is, his comment came in on Sunday morning. Friday morning skate session, a late morning, was the day I got the heat stroke. And... I've had so many great comments from so many great dudes, you know, telling me it sounds like it was like a maybe a dehydration or heat induced panic attack. Now, my wife has had panic attacks. She's actually uh, struggled with them for a long time. And I never knew how intense and how physical it could actually be. I figured it was more just of a thought thing and and maybe she would explain it would come over you like a wave, like boom, like just hit you, you know, like shore break. And um, I was always like, you know, you just got to get a grip on your feelings. You got to, you know, slow yourself down, almost meditate like and and, you know, regulate everything. Calm it down some, you know, and uh, eventually she did that. She conquered it. She doesn't have that anymore. She doesn't experience that anymore. But when she heard me explain what happened to me, she immediately knew that sounds like a panic attack to me. Um, so I think you guys that threw that out are right. And in going back and looking at some of the earlier footage that happened that day that I haven't uploaded yet and trying to make some videos out of that footage, I could hear myself talking about, I was helping Killian in the bowl and there's not going to be a video on this part. But I was helping him practice some stalls. And we didn't finish that video because I was just so taxed. And I was even saying, I feel like it's hotter in here. You know, like I was struggling more and I wasn't even working out. And then I recently did a video on his channel where he's doing stalls. And I had to take a break from helping him. I like put my hands on my knees. and I was like, wait a second, let me catch my breath. And I mean, I'm only standing there. So I think I've been having these signs of dehydration for the last couple of years. Drinking too much caffeine, too many monsters. Now, drinking monsters isn't something new for me. My body's been used to doing that for 15 or so years from whenever they first came out. And back out in uh, Menifee, California, when I was into the FMX thing, um, some of my friends were sponsored by the energy drinks and they'd bring me cases of it. So... You know, when I say I drank at least usually two a day, I only did that because they said you should limit it to two a day. I was sometimes drinking those tall cans, drinking three or four a day, you know, um, not being very healthy. I didn't sweat so much in Cali, so I think I'm noticing the effects of it much more here. Plus, I'm getting older. So anyway, I want to let you guys know I've been drinking half a day just to kind of keep my head right. And uh, I intend to quit it completely. Um, I think a Zevia in the morning and maybe a coffee. I drink coffee on the work days and I don't drink it on the weekends because I, I like to stay level. I don't want to get too hooked on that either. It's interesting that Beezer left this comment after the fact. And I was just looking at some video I made before the heat stroke thing happened on the same day. I was actually talking about reality and getting a little spiritual in my thinking and it's sort of a fluffy video that I was reluctant to upload 
but I had edited it last night and I wasn't going to upload it. I thought, no, I'm not going to upload it. But now that he left this comment, I sort of feel like maybe I should upload it. You know, maybe you guys are going to think I'm crazy. You guys might think he's crazy, but you know what? The both of us can be crazy in this together. Um, I don't think it's crazy at all. It, it is what it is. And I'll let you watch the video and come to your own conclusions. And, and uh, you know, in the end, we all are the master of our own universe because we decide. We decide what's true, what's wrong what to do and what not to do. And it will be measured to us however we measure it in the end. And that's quoted from the Bible. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Bye. So we're back. I'm not sure if I'm ready, guys. I spent two days last weekend, a little bit Saturday, a little bit Sunday, doing kickflips. And after not doing kickflips for well over a year, that made a bunch of muscles I haven't used in a very long time. Really sore, man. I was like super sore everywhere. Um, abs are still sore. I still feel the lower ab pain doing some things. Um, what did I try to do the other day? I was pushing a heavy cart at Costco and I tried to just sort of lift my feet up and sort of sketch on it. And, oh, I was like reminded, oh yeah, dude, you got that stomach muscle injury thing going on still. I'm hoping I'm at a point where I can feel it, but maybe I can just sort of get back into the groove and just go maybe a little easy and then gradually I just start to forget about it, right? And uh, it doesn't get more worse, but it actually starts to feel better as I go. So... I was looking back into the past footage and it's been over a month since I even skated this bowl. So with four weeks of not doing like, ugh, my front side grind. I haven't done my front side grind in so long. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm relearning because I'm not relearning, right? I just gotta get back into the groove. So I have a couple choices right now. I can take this with a lot of fear and negativity. I'm gonna be hurt. I'm gonna have to start over. Like a guy I used to skate with all the time would say if he missed a week or two weeks, he was gonna have to start over. That was honestly his belief. And I would try to be like, no, dude, you don't have to start over. You just gotta start again, right? Starting over, what a terrible thing to have to mentally prepare yourself to get to need to go back to square one again. Nah, I ain't at that level. No way. I'm not even going to accept a belief like that. So, and especially with this past injury, right? Past tense. I don't have this anymore. If I feel some soreness today, that's where I keep my head. I keep my head that this is past, this is history. It's just making its way outside of my reality. Not something I'm experiencing anymore and I'm good to go. So, so that's where I'm at. I have a little tenderness. When I push, when I push with my left foot, right, so I'm not pushing Mongo, I'm pushing with my left foot. Um, and I feel it pushing with my right foot too. But right about, let's see if I can show you. Right about right here, right? So here's my belt. Right about right here. I feel some pulling, you know, and a little bit of pain and some pulling. And this is with a gentle push. If I was to push hard or like strain that, that would probably be a setback. So because I'm feeling that tenderness, I'm going to skate, but I'm definitely not going to try to push it yet. Um, I'm 49 years old. This can heal up. 
I'm setting the placebo effect, right? Like I'm, I'm making the rules to the program. If you've never seen the video on the double slit, S-L-I-T experiment, I might link it below, but consciousness creates reality. And the double slit experiment really proves that. I mean, maybe not to all of you people, Barry, but I definitely believe the double slit experiment. I believe what Jesus said about the whole deal. Think of things that are not as though they were. Have faith. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. I actually, crazily enough, believe it doesn't mean you need to use like a, an earth mover, a dozer, to move a mountain. That's the nuts and bolts method. I think we can do it with our minds. I think reality will change like it's fractal. A fractal reality can just change. I mean, I believe that. If I wanted to widen out this bowl and make these pockets bigger, I honestly believe with controlling my thoughts, controlling the way I see it, I could have that happen. I mean, whether it's shared in physical reality with other people, I don't know, because I don't really believe any of it's physical anyway, it's a dream. So, am I really feeling this pain? Or is this pain a shadow of something else? Something internally that I'm dealing with, some inner battle or struggle, or, or whatever, that's what I think it is. Disease, right? There's a lack of ease going on in the rest of your world. And I think when you start to experience some sort of external situation like that, I think there's an inner repair that needs to happen first. So, I'm doing that. So I'm just going to get into this and you know what, get back into the groove. This thing's going to heal up as I'm using it.